In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your first simple system using Cordis and QSys. So first, what we're going to have to do is we're going to need to open up Cordis. So let's open up Cordis. All right, so this is your first screen when you first open up Cordis. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come up here to File, a New Project Wizard. You have to start a new project before you do anything else. Next, where we want a directory for this. So we're going to want to not put it right here. Let's put it up in our local disk, Altera. Let's make a new folder here and call this My Systems. And in here, we're going to make another new folder. So we're going to have two folder level structure here. And in this folder, we're going to name this for, for lack of a better term, system one. System one, there we go. Name of this project, we're going to name this Neos two. And we're going to want these description to be the same. Our top level design, we want it to be the same. Next, empty project. No, we're not going to do a project template. Next, this is if you have files already built, you can add them already here. But we don't have that. We're starting from scratch, so we don't need to put anything there. Now comes the fun part. So now we have to find our cyclone, where cyclone, at least what I have is cyclone 4E. And then I'm going to filter it by the number that's on the specific chip. So if you look at your, your development board or your FPGA that you have, I have the DE2115. And on there, you can see on the Cyclone FPGA chip, you have this EP4EC115F29C7. And it corresponds with this one right here. There we go. So we need to select our specific FPGA. This might be different for you than me, but um, select the correct FPGA that you have. Click next. And here, since we're going, we're in the web edition, we're going to want none for simulation. Um, it causes a little bit of problems because um, we don't have a, the, the full suite uh, of software. So if none now, you can do simulations later, but you have to do uh, the manual transition between the two. Next, this is just a overview of the system and let's finish. All right, now we have this. So next we want to do is file new. This is different than new project and we want to make a block diagram. So design files, block diagram, schematic file. Okay. So we have this. And before we do anything else, save as. So you want to save as system one, make sure we're in the right folder. And this needs to be the same exact name that you named your project for it to be in the top level, it makes everything a lot simpler and a lot easier. So this right here, would it rename for you automatically, neos2.bdf, that's what you want to name it as, whatever you need. So save, now we have, okay, we have a block diagram and we have a system. So now what do we need to do? We need to open up QSys, and QSys used to be called SOPC Builder, so if you look around in forums and stuff, QSys and SOPC Builder go hand in hand. It'll start up and then we can start building our system. So first things first, we have our clock here. It's, you have to have a clock for any system, so they automatically give you one. You can use multiple clocks for other things, which we'll get into that in later lessons. So first thing, let's check out our clock. So if you double click, you'll get a clock up over here. So frequency, we want our clock frequency to be fit. Um, that is that's the correct that's what we want the known frequency and then we can also rename it by right clicking and going down to rename we can call this clock all right so now what's the next thing that we need besides a clock well we're gonna need the neos 2 processor so we can go over to So 
So we can go to process and peripherals. Embedded processors and Neos 2 processor. If you have a classic project or something like that, you can do the Neos 2 classic processor. This is the newest processor with the system. So double click, you can add it, or you can click the little add button down here. Now you're going to get a lot of errors and stuff. So this comes up, we're going to choose which kind of core we want, the E or the F. Um, let's go just with F, it's got everything. Um, or the E, which is just features JTAG. So we'll just go with the E version, because, or the F version, I'm sorry. You can go with the F version. And that's all we're going to need to do right now in EOS 2. So whenever you add a component, you're going to get a lot of these errors that pop up. They're basically telling you what exactly needs to be done, what things aren't connected. So your processor is just sitting here, and so is your clock. So what you can do, reset slave is not specified. So the reset slave, which is right here, is not specified. So what should it be? It should be the clock reset. It should determine its reset, correct? So when we click that, as you can see, the error goes away for reset must be connected to reset source. And for this one, the clock in reset is it exported already, that's good. And then the clock in is exported already. Um, and then we also need to connect our clock to our actual clock. So the clock for their Neos 2 processor is connected to our clock, so it can actually function as a processor. And reset slave and exception, um, they're there because we have to add memory. So let's add tightly coupled memory real fast, which is on-chip memory. It's on the FPGA. It's really, really fast memory. And you can also search up here for anything that you need. So on-chip memory. RAM or ROM, this is one we want. Double click it, it adds. So we have RAM writable. And we want auto 32. And for this right here, this is the default memory size. But since on the FPGA that I are the D2115 board, we have four zero zero bytes of uh, memory. So we're going to want to utilize all that because it's there and it's very, very fast. And the more very, very fast memory you have, the faster your program can run. So it's really great. And this is all we need to do here. If you finish and again, you see, you see all these. Now we have a, a warning here as well. Just to let you know warnings and um, errors have to be taken care of in this, in this part. So a clock needs to be connected to a clock, correct? Uh, S1, so this is one of the few times when something needs like this. So we need to connect our primary memory. So the primary memory is the one memory that we actually download to and we execute off of every single time. It's not uh, flash memory off over to the side or it's not a DDR RAM or something like that that's for a specific purpose. Um, if we want to execute our instructions off of this and everything, we need both data master and instruction master to be connected but you should only have that on one system as a general rule there's a few exceptions which you'll see in later videos our reset we need to connect our reset to our neos2 clock reset and i forgot this right here needs to be connected as well the debug request uh, reset for the processor as well and then that will also take care of this right here. You want both resets connected. You could also leave these off, and there's an option up here at the top. You can go to System, um, Create Global Reset Network, and it does it for you. But it's not always perfect, so use it as a guideline for things. Um, and one more thing that we want to do is we're getting these errors right here. So it's saying it's overlapping 
these two things. Okay, so why are they overlapping? So we need to do this right here. This should be at zero, zero, zero. Our on-chip memory, you want your primary memory always at zero, zero, zero. It's best practice and it makes things a lot easier in the long term. So this right here is open. So this is one, one time I would lock it, come up to system, assign base addresses, and that goes away. Now this is a signed base address. I'm just gonna lock that, and never have to worry about it again. So we have memory, news to processor, and a clock. What else are we gonna need? Well, we're gonna need some way of programming it, correct? So we're gonna need a JTAG. So let's come over here, JTAG uh, UART, right here. Double click that, now we have JTAG. 64, 8, and 64 and 8 is what you want. Everything else here is good, so finish, keep the defaults. And we're going to want to connect the clock, of course. It's the first thing that you're going to want to do. The reset, we're going to want to connect the both of those. And the Avalon JTAG slave. I want that to be just data. So now we're getting these same errors right here, which is on chip memory, it's overlapping. So we can go system, assign base addresses, and those go away. We can lock this now. And now we have everything basically done here. We just need to do our interrupts. Um, so our interrupt for our JTAG, which you come over here, you click this, it'll automatically connect it over here on the left, on here on the right. We want this to be a high number, like there's 32 interrupts, so we want it to be a higher interrupt, so let's choose eight. Um, and then that way we just want everything else to be able to interrupt before it. So, and then reset slave, and so now we have on-chip memory. So, before we go that, let's come in here and rename some of this stuff. Let's, since we've added a few components, let's rename them so they're easier to read and easier to understand what they are. So let's rename our Neos2 pro so to Neos2 processor. On-chip memory, let's just rename this to on-chip memory. Leave off that extra stuff. JTAG, let us rename this to JTAG UART, so we know it's the JTAG. So we have the clock, Neos2 processor. It's, looks like I have one too many underscores in there. Neos2 processor, on-chip memory, and JTAG UART. Now what we want to do is take care of these errors now that we have on-chip memory on here. So we're going to want to come into the processor. You do that by double-clicking on the processor, and you get the processor window come up. And we're going to look at vectors, reset vector. We're going to want to choose what this is. So we want this to be on-chip memory. And then the exception vector, we want that to on-chip memory as well. Caches and memory interfaces for disabled, none. It's all good, arithmetic. This looks good, JTAG. So if this is all good, leave this all the way it is. Um, the only thing we want to do is come in here and change our on-chip memory and our on-chip memory for our exception and reset vector. When we're done with that, you can just click exit, see how those errors now went away. So for our first program that we're going to want to do, we have a clock, a processor, memory, and JTAG. What are we going to do? To We want some sort of human, human interface that we can see. Um, so we're going to want to add a PIO real fast. So let's do up here, search for PIO, parallel input output. Let's make this 8 bits, making an output only, because it's going to go to LEDs. Um, and that's it. We're not going to worry about any interrupts at this moment in time for the PIO. So PIO, we want to connect the clock to a clock, the reset to our reset network, and we're going to want to connect the data master, just the data master. And then we're also going to want to external connect this, double click to export, so you export this to our system so now that we can 
Um, get it. So we're gonna name these green G LEDs or green LEDs. We're gonna come up here and rename this to. And I'm a stickler for naming these things the same. So there we go, we have that. And now we also have an overlap again, because everything in here is memory map. So everything that you do is technically written someplace in memory. So that's why all of these have memory locations. See it, this needs to be changed. System, assign base addresses, goes away. And one more thing that we need to add before anything, since we're using clips for this project, is we're gonna need to add a system ID or system ID. And this is just because we need some way for Eclipse to know what it is. And so this right here needs to be some random value. I'm gonna put one, zero, one, zero. Random hex value, it's all it needs to be. Um, so let's add our clock our reset network and our control is we're going to go to data and again we have that same problem that we've had everything in here so we're going to lock the what we currently had system sign base addresses and now info is different um, infos are okay you can have infos just telling information you can't have any warnings or errors in this moment before you generate because if you have any warnings or errors then you're going to have problems um, later down the line and it's gonna be a problem. Um, so with messages, you have unsaved. Uh, so system ID is not automatically assigned and just my parameter provided UK ID. We just did that. The timestamp will automatically updated a component is generated. All right, sounds perfectly two logically good things that we want. Let's go to our address map. We can see all of our addresses and where they are. So this is good if you're developing something and you don't know what the address is, you can always, this is open, you can always come here and see what it is. So now that we have everything here, we're going to want to save this. So file, save. So system one. And so we're going to call this Neos to system. It needs to be a different name than what we had previously. It cannot be called Neos 2 like we had other before. It has to be something different, Neos 2.1 or Neos2 system as I have it here, and make sure it's a Q, uh, QSYS file, QSYS. Uh, we're gonna save this, and saving the system. And then once we're ready, we're ready to generate at this moment in time. So we generate, generate HDL. Again, we're gonna wanna have the Verilog. Um, uncheck this box, because we don't have that since it's web edition. Uh, create block diagram BSF. And we're going to do that because we're not going to dive right into Verilog right away. We're going to do the system first um, and learn QSIS, Cordis, and the development design flow, and then work on more advanced uh, projects later. So make sure this path is all correct. So you Altera my systems. System one, Neos two system. Sounds good. We're going to click generate. It's going to go through and generate. You don't want any errors or warnings at the stage after the generation. Um, those are normally bad things. All right, this is exactly what you want to see. You want to see generate complete successful. Um, no errors, no warnings in all of this, just information telling you. And when we're done, we can hit close. So we're done with QSIS right here. We've generated our first system. Next video, I'm going to show you exactly how to take that system, bring it in to Cordis and actually start assigning pins and making it so that something can actually run on an FPGA. Um, see you in the next lesson. Don't forget, there's written documentation, and all of these files will be available on fpga.seanwrall.com, and links for those are in the description that take you there.